Welcome back to another episode of Inside Access Control, sponsored by SIA. Very excited today to have Steve Humphreys with me, uh, the CEO of Adentive. Uh, very well known within the industry, so uh, I'm sure most of the people that are watching this uh, are, are familiar with Steve and, and the company, but they've actually recently had a, a, lo a lot of renews that has come out and really been on the forefront of a lot of the trends that you're seeing in the marketplace currently now with COVID, federal government, enterprise, the rest. So thought it'd be good to have Steve come on and uh, have a conversation about what you're seeing in the market. So Steve, thanks very much for taking the time. No, thanks, Lee. Thanks for having me on. There's certainly uh, so many dynamics. That's probably the word that, <laughs> that applies to everything we deal with these days that uh, happy to talk about it and happy to go into whatever direction you want to go into and, uh, and talk about what we're seeing in the business. I appreciate it. So why don't we start off, we'll, we'll get the, uh, the corporate stuff <laughs> out of the way that we can get in the conversation. But um, for those that aren't familiar uh, with the different brands and that that you have and, and really your history within the industry, um, if you don't mind, can you give a little bit of background on that and then speak a bit to some of the new stuff that you've had recently come to market? Yeah, you bet. Uh, certainly, we've been in the industry for uh, for over thirty years, as uh, as, as any, most people watching us will know. Our Hirsch brand uh, is, uh, is is probably the best known uh, in the physical security space. Uh, we acquired a company uh, in the uh, video analytics space called Three VR, which we've now integrated with our access control. We also acquired the Freedom line of uh, of web and uh, uh, and edge based uh, access control, which also included Enterphone, which is the telephone entry. Uh, and uh, and uh, we have a, a pr pretty uh, rapidly growing RFID business, all the transponders that uh, go into all the facilities, um, and a smart card reader authentication business. So we've been in the convergent space for a long time. And as you mentioned, uh, both with everything going on and uh, being driven by our verticals, we've done a number of uh, product launches. Um, for example, we, uh, we, we launched a contact tracing app um, which, which really any uh, uh, access control company can do to track when people are coming in and out of the building. If someone comes up positive with a COVID test, you know, who is going in and out of the, that same facility in that same time frame as that person, you know, very straightforward. Then a little, a um, uh, little more elaborate, we, uh, we have an occupancy tracking system using uh, both access control and video to track people as they're going in and out real time. So instead of someone standing outside the door of a grocery store and saying you can go in and you can't, you've got a number up there that says there's 25 people out in the store right now. There's 20, you know, it's going to be busy pretty soon. Now there's 25, no, no, no more entry. So um, uh, we, we could go into a number of, of product launches there, but that, that hopefully gives you a, a quick, uh, quick thumbnail on the company. Um, we're very active, of course, in the federal government. Uh, we do all the FBI, the IRS, Secret Service, you know, you name it. Um, we also are pretty active in banking, uh, hospitals, schools, uh, state and local government, uh, municipal airports, uh, you know, hotels, and transportation. Yeah, so basically you've been around a long time, a lot, of, a lot of different places within the company and that. And I would also say that some of the new recent too also is you brought on Mike Taylor, who's known within the industry as well. So that's another, uh, you know, we, we, we always like to talk about the technical sort of developments within our industry, but sometimes it's also the business side. So I wanted to recognize that, that that's where Mike's at now. You bet. Yeah, yeah people, are, people are, I mean, anyone in this industry knows people are what makes it go round, in fact. Right. You know? Uh, yeah, but it's hard to take pictures of those and put them in trade booths and, uh, you know, and, and it, no, no one has a blue blinky light, so we don't like to talk about that. But, um, but yeah, so I understood now the, the impact on COVID, obviously seeing it not just on the business side, but the technical side of the development work that you all are doing on that end. Um, as somebody who has a legacy brand like you do within in the industry, and I mean, we're starting to see... Um, new entrants come into the space. We're starting to see, I, I like to write a lot about how the industry is going more mainstream at this point than just the high security side. We're starting to see a lot more attention, whether it's the venture capital side or it's even, I mean, I, I, I get calls from bankers and people that probably didn't think about our stuff before, right? And really no one thought about us really until uh, something bad happened a lot of times. So that being said, as a legacy brand that has, you know, a, a long list of customers you have to take care of, how do you balance the need for innovation with the iteration that we see that happens in the industry? No, it's, a great, it's a great question. And in fact, um, you know, it, it's the customers that drive uh, everything we do and that we, that we all do. And the customers need and want innovation. So that's, that's what drives the, the pace at which things go. Sometimes they aren't aware of what the possibilities are. And so you got to bring something to them like, you know, like the, the companies that already have the video surveillance in there and they can very easily add occupancy tracking 
Some of our customers said, this is great. You know, we can just drop in a couple of sensors and, and off we go. Um, and so it's, it's actually a really powerful position if you're willing to, um, you know, transform yourself and, uh, and bring the customer along with you because we've got such a trusted relationship with our customers that first and foremost, if we can bring them forward, um, they're thrilled to be working with the company they already know and trust and has a quality reputation uh, and you can build it. The other thing is, um, we are, are a little differentiated from a lot of the companies in the space in that uh, we have virtually all of the components that we do ourselves, right? We do our own door readers, you know, in competition with, with HID. You know, we have our own panels as well as open source panels. Um, we have software, we have cloud-based, you have know, on-prem. We do our own credentials as well as, of course, uh, standard-based credentials and mobile credentials. So um, the challenge that a lot of uh, customers have is there are all these vendors coming in with all these pieces you know, use my mobile credential with this company's reader, talking to that system, you know, that's, that's as you say, you know, legacy in the back on a panel. And now I want to put in edge devices and intelligent cameras, right? And, and suddenly you got to manage them all. We can help bring customers forward with whatever they want for best of breed there. But if they want us to manage a whole bunch of it, take them to their cloud migration with a mobile credential and a Bluetooth enabled reader, we can get that all for them as well. So we, we're trying to balance the best of both worlds of uh, giving them something really trusted and really reliable, but also as advanced and progressive as they want and as, uh, as they're able to, to absorb. Always, you know, always gated by their own priorities and their own budgets. Yeah, no, it, it does a lot of times come down to that. And that's, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see because I, I do believe one of the trends in UA, you all may be there uh, already <laughs> compared to where I think the marketplace is going, where the fragmentation has forever been there. And it's actually been somewhat of a, a, a value prop, crazily, like having yeah. that fragmentation, which I think for the industry was good. There was the ability to have margin, you know, protection. And, you know, there, there's like a lot of the things that come with with that fragmentation, as long as you can control. But now that it's sort of like the, the benefit is going to become the negative and the fact that it's it's also like you were saying, it's, it's, it's hard to manage uh, and it's hard to, to know who to point to and have a conversation with. And um, it's also, I think, hard for companies to brand. Like there's a whole bunch of ways that, but this whole desire to have more dollar per door, um, I, I believe is a big driver uh, on a lot of that. And it, the closed versus open systems, um, but it sounds like to me, you have the ability through, are, are you all using like OSDP and are you, so you're using some of the standards that exist. You have the choice, I guess, as a customer to, go a la carte if you want to, or buy the Happy Meal, if you want. Yeah, well, is that I, how it I, works? I, exactly. I mean, I think you said it exactly right, too, which is this, this, this industry has been fragmented. Um, and in a lot of ways, it's been the worst of both worlds, you know, frankly, because it was fragmented without getting in the benefits of open standards, right? You had to read, get a, you got, got a reader, you know, it was an HID reader, and it was from HID. It's not open, it's proprietary. Um, and you, you know, you want a panel. Well, most of them are from Mercury, and it's great as long as you like what Mercury is doing. But that's not really open. That's not that's not an IP standard. That's right. not OSDP. You know, and same thing in the video space. You saw it a bunch. You know, OnVIF is great, but there's a lot of semi uh, adoption of OnVIF, and then everybody has their own version of OnVIF. Um, so we yeah, we they're like it. Android, I guess. Is uh, that yeah, a good way of looking at it? Yeah, know. yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. There's a bunch of different Androids, and especially Android different implementations, and. And, and people are seeing, you know, with, with, you know with, with the Apple model, you know, somebody controlling the platform, but also a lot of openness and as you can interact into it. So you've got tons of apps and you've got tons of devices that are connected to it. Um, and then ultimately, uh, there's, there's a lot of open source that is starting to come in here. I mentioned our telephone entry uh, space. Um, the vast majority of SIP telephony can just be done with open source software, you know, on a, on a Linux kernel, and suddenly you have something that is truly interoperable, um, and yet gets the benefit of being integrated with your system. So I, I think the, the industry is, is transforming there. The good news is a lot of both the CISOs and, and CISOs understand actual, you know, open platforms, and they know how it works, and they want it. But our industry, you know, a lot of people make money from little proprietary silos and uh and you know we, we you know some in the industry are doing a little bit of bait and switch on uh you know here's the next generation of our proprietary silo it's open but it's not really no i agree to get people there fairly quickly 
Yeah, and I, I believe as it gets out of the cottage industry and it gets a little bit more, some of those things are going to be uh, pressed upon. And, and I actually, I, I wonder if there's, you know, uh, parallel strategies in place by some of these companies where they're going to try to get as much out of that as they possibly can. And they know at some point that that dance is going to end. So they're going to have to shift over and, 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 and uh, all of a sudden they'll start to support it. I mean, I, I yeah. you know, it, it, the more that say like Apple and some of these other people come into play and you, you know, and, and they start to push some of that stuff. And those are 800 pound gorillas that are, as you know, yeah. you dance with them now. Yep. They're not easy to dance with. So curious to see what the impacts. Um, so from your point of view, uh, as you know, the chaos through the crisis, if you would, without sounding like a news anchor, um, it, when it, Co's out, like, there's like hyper adoption of things and people trying to do, and I'll give people the benefit of the doubt, they're trying to do the right thing, whether it's fever cameras, temp cameras, it's touchless, whatever it might be, we're throwing hammers trying to just solve a problem, right? And then I do think things start to, norms start to, as we know more, and, and start to come out of the things that are going on right now, how do you see these playing out? Like what is going to stick and what is a fad, if you would, or maybe not going to have as much uh, adoption as we may think it currently does now. Do you have any insights into that from what you're seeing? You know, I, I think you know, fundamentally people are realizing that, you know, that, that physical security platforms are really natural infrastructure for the workplace. And, uh, and so whether it's a, a thermal, thermal camera, and as we, we've talked, talked before that we did a bunch of tests on those and there's, uh, there, there, there's, there's a lot of um, left to be desired. Yeah, left to be desired. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to say it without being overly critical. Uh, um, uh, so, so it's not exactly obvious what the right plugin is, but realizing these are platforms you can do that plugin is a natural one. So whether it's our occupancy tracking with video, which is which is super straightforward, or the the contact tracing that I was talking about earlier, or having your thermal scan connect in with your access control, you know, you tap your badge, you do your 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 forehead if that's what you want, and the door opens or it doesn't. You know, it's it's a natural platform for a lot of things. And I think that's what people are realizing is we've already got the HR database in this thing. And, and access control is actually um, sometimes not as glamorous uh, as, as some of the other infrastructure that's going in. Everybody likes machine learning and video and everything, but access is actually where your personal database, personnel database is located. And a lot of the events that you want to enable or disable. And so I think it's just, what we're gonna see is it's a platform you can plug a whole bunch in uh, that, that goes. And the other thing is, again, we talked about this, there, the, there's certainly a movement towards, um, uh, you know, OpEx versus CapEx on the acquisition side, you know, buying as a, whether you want to call it complete cloud or a managed service or, or anything else. Um, that then also allows the, the continuous upgrading and a, a enhancement of capability of the system. And I think that's going to be, you know, a trend that, uh, that has really been accelerated by this and is not going to slow down. Yeah, no, I would agree. I, you know, cloud we've been talking about for a while yeah. and it, now it, it's gone from a nice to have to a uh, need to have. I wouldn't even say have to have it. It's, it's sort of like the, the connectivity, the remote access, the business continuity side of it. Um, I agree with you. I, I do think the hybrid side of it is where you're going to see a lot where yeah. things that need to be in the cloud will be in the cloud. Things that need to be on-prem will be on-prem. Sometimes depending on CapEx, OpEx, how you want to do it. You may go all cloud, maybe go all whatever, but the, the options, which shockingly sounds a lot like IT systems, right? Like that's, right. I think what we're talking about is that where the convergence of moving to IT is, I don't think there's going to be a magical moment. Like we're going to point to, maybe maybe we point to COVID and be like, that's one of those times that it went, but I, I don't know. Um, I, I also agree with you. I think the operating system of buildings and looking at the utilities of how they work together now, whether it's an access control system that can be that or the access control systems, a feature of a system that does that or the capabilities, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I, I do agree. I, I think that operating system going from siloed safety system where you're, we got away with so many years of saying, don't integrate that over to that because, you know, that makes it risky from a safety standpoint. Now, I think people are questioning whether that works. Maybe, maybe some use cases where that makes sense, like in the airports, possibly. I don't know. Um, but like, but like you said, I, I, I think people are going to be challenged if they continue that point of view. No, I think you're right. I think, I think and just as an IT, every investment, uh, the, 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 the business needs to leverage. 
And so you need to have that ability to be open and to provide more capabilities into it. And then as soon as, uh, as, soon as it has to be open and integrated like that, you know, the, the level of security and maintainability of that security has to go to a, a level beyond what a lot of the systems have operated uh, as, as well. It's gotta be real time, it's gotta be perpetual, it's gotta be dynamic. Uh, and, and I think those are the other things that are then gonna start driving at the whole infrastructure forward. Yeah, which will also then trickle down, if you would, into the the different type of system integrator than maybe we have historically seen, or the ones that are there. There are those that exist currently now, but maybe there'll be even more of them than the handful that you know. Systems will not just be convergence of access control and this, you know security and video, but it'll be Workday and Salesforce and these other systems that get get brought into it. So, yeah. well, Steve, I, I could talk to you all day long about this stuff, and I, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. If people want to find out more information, where's the best place to go? Uh, identive.com uh, is uh, pretty easy. Just remember it's uh, identive without a V. So I-D-E-N-T-I-V.com. Perfect. Well, Steve, thank you. It's uh, an honor to have you come on board. Uh, I appreciate you making the time. I know you're busy. So thank you very much and good luck with everything. Thanks, Lee. It's always a pleasure to talk.